to Live and Breathe Horses and today we are going on with this fabulous book, More Than a Horseman, from Tom Dorrance. Well, from Tom, about Tom Dorrance. It was his wife, Margaret, and John St. Ryan who collected the stories, actually. So today's story is from Leslie Dorrance. The first time I met and heard Tom came early in my husband Steve and my courtship. I had heard that there were amazing horsemen in the family and Steve was very proud of his Uncle Tom. My background included riding hunters and jumpers along with growing up in Carmel Valley always on the back of a horse. I at times had thought that I knew quite a bit about horses myself. Steve took me to a place in the valley that I knew was owned by a dressage rider. I was confused since I thought Tom was a cowboy and didn't know why he would want to be working with dressage horses. As we walked up to the arena, I saw there were a few women on dressage horses riding around and an older fellow talking to one of the riders in particular about her horse. I listened and watched and as he talked in a regular tone, I was trying to see what they were trying to do and what the horse was doing wrong. Tom all of a sudden said, there, did you feel that? Did you feel that change? I looked around to see what I'd missed. I hadn't seen anything. I'm sharing this because when I first married my husband and first met Tom, I knew I could ride a horse. But what I didn't know was how many ways I would change how I feel about the horse after being around someone who felt and knew them as Tom did. I honestly think if I had met him when I was a child riding bareback with my string around my pony's neck and swimming horses in the Carmel River back when my horse was my best friend, I would have understood what he had to offer so much sooner than after years of show training and performing and trainers' ideas and opinions that cloud that close understanding you can have with a horse. Tom was patient with me as he was with others. Of course, I wanted to get it right, so I didn't get, a, a get it at all for a while. It was a blow to my ego at first to realise how much I didn't understand. But Tom never changed and just kept helping me to go back to that place when I knew that my horse needed and could work with that. I feel blessed that Tom was so close that I could spend time with him. The kid never left Tom. In the time I knew him, he always had a smile and time to listen. When I ride now, things just come to me sometimes. I f a feel of something different in my horse and I'll think, oh, that's what he meant. Tom is still here in everyone who got just a bit of what he had to offer. <sighs> It's just so amazing. It's like she said, you know, it's that idea that people think, oh, he's just a cowboy, what does he know? Or or anybody who, you know, is a cowboy. And of course, for the horse, it's all the same. It's just different clothes and different tack, maybe different movements. But it doesn't make any difference to the horse. And, you know, that loss in so many ways of equitation nowadays of noticing how the horse is feeling, I find that... Um, quite difficult to see sometimes but anyway <laughs> good news is there is lots of people out there who are interested to explore this work and who understand that you know when the horse feels good about it and the more you can see and understand the horse and um, practice that feedback from the horse and do an effort to make things better that you know it really transforms everything and ultimately makes it all easier you know because when the horse is relaxed of course he's in the better position anyway <laughs> thank you for joining me today keep on tuning into the light and i'll look forward to see you next time <laughs>